Hello and welcome to this Knowledge Share where I'll be demonstrating some of the advanced integration functionality that's exposed by the Generic Broker solution that I've recently published on CodePlex. The Generic Broker is a REST based web service that provides a HTTP interface into the Dynamics WCF services. More information on source code and relevant links relating to documentation are posted at the end of this video. The generic broker exposes a number of rudimentary methods that can be invoked by simple HTTP GET commands. This means that technologies such as JavaScript websites, Microsoft Office macros or even SQL Server scripts are able to plug directly into this type of data communication without the need to create intermediate .NET CLR libraries. The signature requirements for the primary invocation method are relatively straightforward. It requires an XML string which can either be specified as a URL parameter using HTTP GET or POST commands. Examples of how to structure these commands are shown on the ASP.NET test page here. So here is an example of how you would pass through the XML using a URL request and here's an example of how you would post this information to the web method. Let's now go through a practical example just to demonstrate how this would be used. I have a URL here that I created earlier and as you can see the first portion of the URL corresponds with the structure that's given in the example ASP.NET test page. So we'll be creating a HTTP GET request. The remainder of the URL corresponds with the parameter for the method signature and the method signature requires an XML string and as part of this XML string we define the direction of the request, the service class that we need the .NET reflector to instantiate, the method within that class that we would like to invoke and then between the data tags here, the actual XML that we want to execute on the AOS. Let's go ahead and paste this URL string into a browser. Okay, the execute is relatively quick and we can see that we have a return result of uh, 724,000. But what this means will probably become a little bit more clear once we have a look at the X++ that got executed. The X++ that got executed is highlighted here between the data tags. And as you can see, what I'm doing here is I'm doing a num number to string conversion and we're invoking a static method on the cust table. Let's go ahead and have a look at that particular code within the AOS. Here is a job within the AOT that's an X++ representation of the command that we just executed on our URL pass through. We have a cust table object and we're invoking the find the static find method on the cust table object to get ourselves customer 65. Once we've got hold of customer 65 then we attempt to display the balance or retrieve the balance in GBP or Sterling for that particular customer. Let's go ahead and execute this job and we get a balance of roughly 724,000 and this number correlates exactly with our previous result here when we invoked the same functionality on a URL request, on a HTTP request. Let's go ahead and change this customer just to kind of test our scenario. Let's change it to customer 66 and let's re-execute this job. And the balance for customer 66 is just shy of 3,000 pounds. We should be able to simulate this using our pass-through command. And within the browser, I should be able to just change the query parameter here to 66. And as you can see, it's brought back a relatively instantaneous result, which corresponds with the result that we got in our info log message. 
very very powerful very very flexible opening up a world of opportunities because now we have the ability to fire HTTP get commands directly at the Dynamics AOS from frameworks like JavaScript or Excel or VBA macros. Let's extend out this demonstration just to show you the range of possibilities. I have an Excel macro enabled spreadsheet here. Let's go ahead and en enable content. Now this isn't a Visual Studio Tools for Office spreadsheet. We haven't done anything with .NET here. Everything has been done with standard VBA macros. And if we have a look at one of the macros that's embedded within this spreadsheet, just get this within the viewport. You can see that I've got a very basic function that I can invoke from within one of the worksheets that goes ahead and gets me the balance. And uh, it asks for one parameter, and that parameter is the customer code. The VBA macro creates a HTTP object and then it attempts a HTTP GET command and the structure of the URL that it composes exactly mirrors the URL request that we literally just issued from within Internet Explorer. We do a variable replacement here between the FIND statement so that we substitute in the customer code that is passed into this routine. And then what we do is we strip out some unnecessary tags and just isolate to the result that we're after. If we go back to the spreadsheet, you can see that the way that the method mani or the function manifests itself on the spreadsheet is very simplistic. We just invoke the method with the cell that actually contains the information. Now, I, theoretically, you've got all of the functionality of Excel itself. So if I was just to copy down these cells for about approximately 10 cells, you can see what's happened. The customer code has incremented itself and where we have a balance, that balance has uh, updated itself by invoking the method using the REST service. So we're actually executing dynamic X++ for each one of these cells. Now all of this has been done using standard HTTP without the need to write any .NET, intermediate .NET CLR module. Taking the example further, let's apply it to a JavaScript based website. We're looking at a very simple HTML page here that's a combination of both JavaScript and a HTML data entry page here between the body tags. The JavaScript function performs an AJAX request based on the URL that's passed in and returns the response. The data entry form looks something like this. It contains a text box that will allow us to enter our customer account code and a button to initiate the Ajax web request to our RESTful service. In the on-click event of the button, we will initiate a call to our routine, our HTTP GET routine, using a constructed URL. The URL is quite a lengthy one, but it's the same, it's constructed in the same manner as it was in our Excel example. You can see here that between the find open bracket and close bracket, we're performing a replacement based on the text box called account num, which is the at text box right there. Let's go ahead and key in the account number that we've been using so far. As soon as I click the go button here, we should initiate our AJAX request to our REST service. And that was the result that we were expecting. Let's just go ahead and key in a few more account numbers just to kind of check the speed and reliability of the system. And as you can see, as I'm changing the account numbers, the balances are adjusting and the performance of the system, performance of the REST service, is pretty good. So as you can see, we've been able to create an integration from a client-side JavaScript 
based solution directly into Dynamics in a relatively simple way with a relatively small amount of code without having to write .NET.